So today is maintenance day. I'm going to do the maintenance on the do-all bandsaw. I love this 50s era vertical bandsaw. It is an absolute beast. And what I need to do is check all of the fluid levels on this thing. We need to change out the coolant. We need to change out both the drive belts on this thing because they're wore out and squeaking. Lots of stuff. We need to grease and oil it. My son is over there ripping it up on his dirt bike. I love the smell of two cycle. So let's get started. Take care of this thing. So the first thing that I want to do to this saw is change out the two large drive belts. This thing has a variable speed drive on it that's just awesome for a saw because it gives you an infinite speed, you know, in between its lowest and highest speed. And it squeaks and it's missing some teeth on the old ones you'll see. So let's see if we can't go over behind the saw and get these belts changed out. So the first thing that I got to do is loosen this hydraulic pump because it's the most outer belt, and then we can pull off these two large drive belts and get them changed out. And all this, the motor and the hydraulic pump are just on a slotted base on this panel, so they will easily, uh, so that we can just loosen these up and it'll easily slide out of the way. So I'm not going to change out this little V-belt here because it's relatively new. I actually changed this out when I got the saw probably a year ago. Let's see if we can't lift this up and just roll these off. So we can just easily roll, roll it off and then hopefully roll off the second one. Let's get a look at these real quick. So you can see this one all busted up. It's even missing a tooth. Not in good shape. You know, they were squeaking as well. I believe I showed that on on a past video. This one belt's not in horrible shape and I'll throw that on a hook and keep it in case one breaks or something. But this one's basically garbage. Let's put the new ones on. So I don't know how well you can see that, but those balancing holes and this big cast pulley that runs the gearbox there, they did a lot of work on this thing. This is a pretty sophisticated drive system for a bandsaw. It's an impressive old saw. And this saw, or this saw is unplugged, so it's safe to work on. There we go. Those two belts changed. Now let's get the small hydraulic belt back on it. And then our belt swap will be complete. Making sure that this pump and pulley is straight with this one. One thing that I love about this old saws, and this is just old equipment like I got, is that it was designed to be serviced. And it's just not hard to work on. Made to be you know, repaired by the guy in the field instead of taken into the shop for maintenance. There we go. Belts are changed. Let's fire this thing up. See what it sounds like with the new belts on it. All right, the phase converter is on. It would squeak really bad at its slowest speed. And that's it. Well, slowest, yeah, slowest in uh, medium, that is. Smoother as well. Nice.
So you can see how nasty that coolant looks. This is Super 100 is the brand, and it always seems to separate bad. This is a 10 to 1 mix, I believe. Now we're going to pull this out into a jug. We're going to flush this system out, and then we're going to change it out with my favorite, my most recent favorite uh, cutting solution, machining uh, coolant, and that is Solutions. I really like that stuff. You'll see, stuff just doesn't seem to separate out like this, this uh, Super 100 does. Plug up my coolant pump, and then I'm going to just unplug the coolant line and run it into this old jug of cleaner and let the coolant pump empty the system. It most of the work for me anyway. And while that's doing its trick, you know, we can uh, get the oils and stuff ready for this thing. Oh yeah, it's working. So this saw is super nice because on this tag on the back it has what types of oils you use, where you use it, and how often you should use it. So there's a lot of little places on this saw that require oil. This is a mobile 600 XP 68. And we're just going to hit all these little oil spots. And this thing will be good for another month or two. So there's a lot of little bushings and pivots. Just hit with a little bit of oil. Little holes that are designed to be just drip, have oil dripped in them. It's definitely easy to overdo it. No reason to put too much on there. The main thing is do it relatively often. Don't put a ton on and then wait forever. Put a little on, you know, come back later. You know, put a little on, right? It's got intervals on it, service intervals, intervals. But that's gonna deter that's gonna be dependent on your usage, right? Better to have a little every now and then than a lot at one time, right? I made you something. What is it? Leave it like that. Okay. Oh, wow, that's nice. See it already. It's glass, isn't it? Mm hmm. You do that on your laser machine? Yeah. That's awesome. Did you do it on the back? Yeah. And just did it yeah, through? Awesome. I had to flip the picture. Yeah. Or had to reverse it. That's yeah. nice. Thank you. Looks good. Got the old pickup on there, Steve and Elizabeth. Made in the USA. I like it. Thank you. So let's check our oil level in our main gearbox here. Let's see where it's at. Now we flushed this gearbox out really good when we first got this saw, so I'm not going to change this. I'm just going to add to it if it needs it. And it does not. It is full. It's good enough. So on the service tag on this machine, it's saying every month change the oil, or at least check the oil level on the gearbox. Now that's most likely assuming that this saw is running 24 7 because that's really what it was designed to do so you'll have to change those intervals according to your use right we can get by with changing the gearbox oil on this probably once a year and as long as it's full that's the main thing so i'm gonna leave that alone for now all right that's got the vast majority of the coolant out of the reservoir i've got a container on the front of this thing that catches fluid that'll that needs to be emptied of chips and coolant and then we'll flush out uh, this coolant system because I don't want to mix uh, this Super 100 with the Solutions cutting oil that I'm going to use because otherwise it just makes a milky muddy brown mess. So this is just a little removable catch can. Get a filter element or a screen on the back and it drains down into the into the main reservoir. So we'll empty this into our container. And at the bottom of this, it should have a bunch of chips as well. Yeah, 
yeah, not a huge fan of, wow, I'm making a mess. Not a huge fan of that Super 100 coolant. Now I'll pull this tray out if I can, I'll get a bolt in it, and then I'll flush that out with water. So I've been using a little giant, just a small submersible pump come from Amazon. Actually, they come from a viewer, but you can pick them up off Amazon. I'm using this exact same pump in the little reservoir on my little horizontal Harbor Freight saw. It's been working great. All right. So that was a cheap and good move on both of these saws, in my opinion. So I just washed off the pump in a bucket of water. Now I'm going to pump that water through the system. Kind of flush out all the lines and stuff. There's still a lot of nasty stuff in the lines. And once I start getting clean water out of there, now I'll consider that done. So that is looking pretty clean, and in my opinion, that's plenty of flow for a saw like this. And with this system, it's best not the system that I have on this saw anyway, pump, small line. It's just best not to let this get too dirty and too you know, caked full of oil and stuff. So that's why we're cleaning it out. So I know some people get confused on the ratios and the mixing and, you know, what should I use and what do you recommend as far as cutting solutions cutting oils. This is what I use and what I like. It's made by Solutions. I simply got it off of uh, off of Amazon, I think it was. I've had really good luck with it. Like the way it holds up, like the way it performs, I even like the way that it smells. Now, I'm going to cut this as per the instructions. I'm going to do a 10 a 10 to 1 ratio. Heavy sawing, that's what they recommend. You can do 20 to 1 if you want a little lighter mix of oil in your solution. I've always had my best luck when I follow the recommendations on on the product, right? They've already done the homework. No reason for us to try to reinvent the wheel and put extra oil in there. Chances are it's just going to come out of solution and you're just going to have a mess on your hands. So mix it the way that they, they recommend and you won't have much problems. Now as far as ratio, I want a 10 to 1 mix. So I know that I've got 30 Dixie cups full of water in here. So if I want a 10 to 1 ratio, I just need three Dixie cups full of, of coolant or oil. So, you know, if this was 30 whiskey bottles, or let's just say you use 10 whiskey bottles full of water, well, then you would just use one whiskey bottle full of, you know, oil. It really is that simple. You know, it ain't got to be perfect because you're going to get evaporation and as soon, soon as it's perfect, as soon as you mix it perfect, it's going to go away from perfect. You get the idea. Just better if you, you know, try to stay close to the recommendations and you'll have the best luck. One Dixie cup. Two Dixie cups. Dixie cups. So that 
is a 10 to 1 mix ratio. Watch me make a huge mess. Yep. I need to figure out a better way. Made very little mess. These flexible funnels, just a sheet of metal covered in plastic. You get them from your master car. They're awesome. Do a lot of oil changes or stuff like that. Hard to access. These are, you know, drain ports. These are nice. They sell them in different sizes. So full of fresh fluid, and I'm just gonna let the system circulate, let it full fill up the panel or the jug on the front of this thing. It'll be done. Coolant system anyway. So there we go. Fresh coolant. This stuff's clear, pretty much clear. Oh, I kind of like it better than that you know, white stuff. I think it's all nasty looking. Let that circulate a while. Drain down in its tub here. So once it fills this up, it overflows through this screen back down into the reservoir with the pump. So this catches the majority of the filings and the chips you know, and that way they don't get into your uh, main reservoir. Pretty neat system, really. So earlier I mentioned the smell of this coolant being not so bad, and, and you may wonder why in the world's that got anything to do with any, something in a shop. Well, if you deal with coolant on an everyday basis, both at home and at work, it matters. This stuff's not too bad. Uh, I can handle that. Some of it, man, just stinks. And I'm not talking about it going rancid. I'm talking about from the very beginning. Some of it just, some of it you can stand, some of it you can't. And this is one that I don't mind, really. I wouldn't drink it, but, you know, it's not horrible. So I've got a grease fit in here that I'm going to hit with some Molly grease. Uh, this thread for the track that adjusts the tension on uh, the blade. And what else? Got to check my blade to the table. I've got a little tool I'm going to use to do that. It's alignment and then grease up or oil up actually my blade guide adjustment because it needs to work smooth. I'll check my blade wipes as well. This thing sounds so good. For as big a saw as this is, it's quiet. So stuff like this, you know, in a shop like mine, you know, where it's not running, you know, 24-7. If you hit this stuff once a year and just keep it clean, you know, you will never, ever have any problems. track really good. Oh, it's got actual grease fittings up there. I really forgot about that. Well. Mm 
bom. So this is not always the case, but in the majority of instances that I see, if something moves, you know, it's probably going to require some sort of lubricant. So you know, stuff that's well lubricated just works so much nicer. This has got a little rack and pinion in the back. That's probably probably good enough. There we go. So it's easy to check this saw to make sure that the blade is you know, 90 degrees to the table, perpendicular. You just use a square straight off the table, and that, my friend, is square. Not even a photon shooting between the two. It's that square. Now this is a tool that somebody sent me probably about a year ago. I never showed it. I apologize for that. I definitely appreciate it. Made by Starrett. It is a blade alignment tool. Really it's made for aligning the blade of a horizontal saw. And what it is is a parallel, basically, with a piece of spring steel hooked to it. You know, a guy could make that one of these if he was inclined to do so. And it just clips on the blade. And it references off the spine, or spine of the blade, right? And then, the, then you have this to it, this whole piece here. It's basically with the blade. And on a horizontal, you would check it, obviously, like that, to make sure that your guides are holding your blade proper, you know, to the base or your work table, right? But with this one, you can check it straight off the table. But you get the idea. Pretty neat little tool. Kind of more of a novelty, maybe, but neat nonetheless. Oh, definitely a well-made piece. So that is square. So let's quickly touch on the body work that I'm doing on this truck. I've got a lot of it to do. A lot, a whole lot, a whole truck's worth, believe it or not, of body work to do. Every panel on this truck needs some attention, but I mean, that's not that's not strange for it being a 1985, right? That's just the way it, that's the way it goes. It's old, kind of like me getting there. Anyway, this door is, is done, and most people would never believe how much time a person, if they want to get something nice and straight, could invest in just a door, right? If you consider the time that I spent putting the, I put the door skin, this outer sheet metal on this door, you know, that was, it was an easy Probably day, I'm guessing, day's worth of work, and then all this filler that you see to bring it back to really nice and smooth. This thing's gonna be slick because I choose to make it that way. Um, you know, that's another day, easy, probably two days to on this door. So there you go. I mean, I'm not as fast as the guys that do this stuff every day, but I have made my share of slick big panels. Uh, you know, I used to do it for a living. And I know, I know how to do it, so this is going to be super nice. And right now it's as slick, other than this spot here uh, that I'm working, um, it's slicker than it was from the factory by far. So I know it looks like there's a lot of filler on this door, but really there's very few places on this that the filler is thicker than a sheet of paper. And this is just what it takes, right, to get one super flat. And the blocks that I'm using are these foam Dura blocks. Super nice. Love these things. Long gone, in my opinion, are the days when a guy like me, I used to use them, would use one of these old big old, you know, heavy rubber blocks. You know, a million passes back and forth with your hand makes a huge difference if you're using one of these light, you know, foam blocks and you can easily get something just as flat with this as you could with about anything. Um, and this kit, you know, not a sponsor or anything, came with all kinds of different block profiles and shapes like this block here. You know, really nice because it's got some flexibility to it because this door is not flat, right? So you can take that block and contour it to the shape and sand that. 
get that really, really nice surface, and then some thinner ones, some shorter flat blocks, and then your long flat surface block. So, really nice kit. <clears throat> oh. So what I'm going to do is I'm just trying to get this cab a little closer to, to ready for paint. Now, this windshield is held in with this rubber gasket. There's no urethane or anything like on the modern vehicles to seal this windshield and the water out. So these are common that they leak. And this one, I believe, leaks as well. Starting to get a little rust around the actual uh, window gasket. Now I'm going to pull out this center locking strip. This is what locks uh, the windshield in. I'm going to pull that out and then I'm going to take a piece of rope or twine, string, whatever, and I'm going to shove up under this gasket. That way I can get, that way when I go to paint this thing, I can get my paint line up and under this windshield gasket and um, you know, I'm not having to tape off around this because a respray on these and any vehicle with one of these type gaskets always starts chipping out and breaking away and, you know, showing damage right around the tape line. If you can get your spray line up under this gasket or just pull the windshield out altogether, you know, you'll get a better job. This thing needs a new uh, locking strip anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and pull that out and then uh, shove some rope or twine or something up under here. That way I can do my sanding and stuff around this windshield. And when I'm done, I can, uh, you know, spray a little urethane up under there as well to help, you know, keep the water leaks down. Would you, would you get me? Chicken chalupa. Ah, very nice. Thank you. Amazon's here. So I picked up a vacuum gauge so I can tune my carburetor properly. I just didn't own a cheap vacuum gauge. And then it looks like a viewer, uh, who was it? Dan, <laughs> I'm gonna butcher the last name, S-C-H-I-E-W-E. -E. So thank you, Dan, sent me a Makita die grinder. How awesome is that? I've wanted one of these for a very long time. Super nice, thank you. 
so I'm a big fan of taco smell. Love their chalupas. So we picked up a vacuum gauge. I, I've been wanting one of these for a long time. But they're just super handy for you know, tuning carburetors, stuff like that. All sorts of little odds and ends. This is just a cheap one. I think I paid 18 bucks for it. Nice big face. Hopefully it'll be relatively accurate. Not that it really matters as long as it consistently shows a difference. But yeah, big vacuum gauge with a hook on it so we can hang that under the hood. Hose, some adapters to tie into, and that's pretty much it. And then the awesome, awesome piece from Dan is a Makita die grinder. Let's get a look at this. Let's see what what a guy gets. So nice when you don't want to use air or you know the tanks down, or if you've got a lot of grinding and stuff to do. Man, that's that's a that's it's got a good feel to it. Good heavy heavy duty feel. Quarter inch call it, so you can run the larger larger burrs and stuff. You can hang it right, just on and off. Nice, nice. A couple stones and a dressing stone with and the tools. So a quick example of what I'm talking about with this window channel and painting around this and not having a paint line here for it to start peeling because this is a respray, at least on the other side it is, and it's peeling right around where they taped. So once you get your locking strip out, take you rope is probably the best. You know, maybe quarter inch or something like that shove it up under there pack it up under there real good you get the idea and what it does is it holds this trim up off of the metal and you can get in there you can sand you can leave that in to you're done painting right and then you just pull it out gasket lays back down no paint line to worry about you know super professional job you didn't have to pull the Pull the glass out. So I got you up here on the cab of the truck. Here's some, some spots that I'm going to have to work. So there was a cab light in this corner. There was all, one in the middle and then one on the other end. And these half ton trucks, I don't remember them ever coming with cab lights. I think uh, my brother said that the three quarter tons, they came with cab lights. But these didn't. So see this paint line around this molding? So this top's been sprayed. So I decided to try a little something different with these holes that 
the person had drilled into the top of this cab for the cab lights. And what I've done is hammered the holes low because they were proud. The, the screw had actually pulled the metal up. So I hammered it down, cleaned it off with an angle grinder, fluxed it well, and now I'm filling it with a solid lead solder with a big soldering iron that's not really big enough for sheet metal work but it turned out really good. Now I'm not trying to finish this bodywork out with lead by no means. All I wanted to do in this, I guess you'd call it a test, is fill the hole with lead that was drilled in it to make sure that it's good and sealed and then come in and do my body filler over top of it. So surprised really how well it worked. People have been lead in cars from, you know, since the beginning. Uh, I had never, <laughs> I'd never done it myself, but I figured that if lead is good enough to seal up water pipes, it'll keep this cab from leaking. It's definitely not going to break off and you know, cause me problems, and it'll give me a good solid base for my for my body filler. I have had a door shell ordered for this door for four months and I still can't get it in. It's quite aggravating, I will say. They keep putting off and putting off the delivery date. I just think those delivery dates are just to keep you hanging on. I, it's what it seems, uh, in this case anyway, ordered it from Summit, still haven't got it in. Now, the one that I want, there's plenty of them out there that you can buy, so you know, I know that, but a lot of them are thin, cheap replacements that don't fit well. The, Shells that I like are from AMD. Same thing that I used on the uh, driver door. It fit excellent. Nice heavy gauge sheet metal. I don't want to replace it if I'm going to replace it with some, you know, cheap one that doesn't fit and causes me a ton of extra body work. So, what I guess I'm going to do is sandblast this real heavy. Even though we do have rust in this bottom seam, and it's against my better judgment, we're going to sandblast this real heavy, both sides. And then, uh, you know, work it. And as long as it's kept dry and out off the salty roads, it'll last. But it's not the best long-term plan. But you get the idea. At least we have a door to work. So let's strip the guts out of this thing. And we'll take it outside. And then we will blast it with the sand.
So I've got you a shot down on top of the cab here. I'm trying to get it back straight again. After 35 years of being used as a truck, this thing, you know, body-wise, pretty rough, uh, as many of you have seen. Door's going to turn out good, I think. The one that we sandblasted just got done doing that. Um, the other door's fine. You know, our hood's, it's going to have to be sanded and blocked, just like the top of this cab. Fenders are new. So this doghouse, cab, whatever, is going to be, it's going to be nice when it's done. Glad to get that maintenance done on the saw because that has been on my mind for a few weeks now just to go over it, you know, make sure that it's, you know, up to speed because that bandsaw is really one of the major workhorses in this shop and I really want to take care of it because if you take care of something like that, it will last forever, just like about anything. So we got a lot of filler in this roof. Uh, not thick, but little wide areas. Uh, big dent here from Bubba, probably flopping down on here with his girlfriend. That's just what I'm thinking. Back in 1987 or something. And then, uh, you know, a couple dents back here from some bags of feed. Who knows? It's been a long time since this was somebody's going to town rig. That's for sure. But once I'm done, you know, it'll, it'll be a going to town rig and a user. You know, again, before too long. A um, lot of work in a roof when they get to, you know a little wave in them or, or some dents in them. But most people don't even worry about finishing the tops of the roof. But you know that's just not the way I do business. You know if I know that it's dented, I'm gonna I'm gonna spend the time that it takes to get it back straight. So we'll block us down. It'll be nice and flat. Pretty flat anyway. And then uh, fill it with a or shoot it with a 2k high bill primer polyethylene uh, and then block sand that down and this should be so slick that a fly runs in tries to land and skips off the other side that's what i'm hoping uh, you know if you're gonna if you're gonna spend the time and do it you might as well do it right the mechanic work on something like this is only half half the battle so we're you know making good headway on the other other part which is the body work. So won't be long. I'll be you know, shooting some primer. So that is it, I guess, for this week anyway. So I'd like to thank you for watching. Viewers, patrons, subscribers, anybody who's helped me out whatsoever, much appreciated. And that's it. I guess I'll see you next time. The birds fly south as the light leaves your eyes. Hold on to your